Bassam Hamzi is a convicted murderer, who is serving a 40-year sentence for a range of crimes. Brothers for Life gang leader Bassam is serving time in Goulburn Supermax prison in NSW. After pulling out a firearm and gunning down 18-year-old Chris Tomazis in 1998 in a nightclub argument in Sydney city center, Bassam fled to Turkey. Bassam was eventually arrested after traveling to Miami in the US and was extradited back to Australia in 1999, where he was sentenced to 21 years behind bars at Lifco Jail. Bassam founded Brothers for Life gang inside the Lithgow prison, and started operating a multi-million dollar syndicate ordering kidnapping, kneecappings, shootings and extortion. Over the past year, a brutal criminal gang has waged a campaign of terror in Australian suburbia. There have been murders, shootings, kneecappings and extortion carried out by gangsters wearing the insignia of Brothers for Life, a gang founded in prison by one of Australia's most notorious criminals, Basim Hamzi. Following this, Basim was moved to Goldburn Supermax prison and is classified as jail's extreme high-risk inmates with restricted access and associations. There are concerns Bassam could be continuing to operate the gang, which has been involved in a violent underworld war on the streets with the rival Alamedin family. In prison Bassam has continued to exert influence over relatives and associates in Sydney and created a constitution intended to govern their behavior. Bassam follows extreme Islam and has managed to convert inmates to Islam and makes them follow his extreme interpretation of Islam. He has been able to manipulate inmates and his gang mates outside the prison to do things in the name of Islam. Court documents show Bassam sought to disseminate a code or constitution that laid out rules for the family and members. In the code, he called on members to spread the Sunnah or Islamic practices and plant the seeds of success for all the family. He said those who failed to follow the code should be fired or forsaken for they will only bring fitna or division to the family. He has also set up a Bassam Hamzi's rulebook for members of his network. Authorities are well aware of his intentions and have kept him in strict conditions. Bassam is allowed just one phone call a week, one visit a fortnight, not from a family member, an hour of exercise each day and just five photos on his cell wall. He is not allowed to speak Arabic on the calls. Bassam has also lost the ability to have board games in his cell, cannot use a toasted sandwich machine or a kettle, and has lost the right to associate with other inmates. But despite the crackdown on his already limited rights, the ISIS sympathizer has been allowed to keep his religious materials, which include a Quran and a prayer mat. Bassam has also been thought to be a firm supporter of the Sharia law, a legal code based on the Quran and other Islamic scripture, and believes that it should be the official law of the land in any country. Back in 2006, Bassam even paid fellow inmates to convert to Islam as a prelude to planning an audacious escape from the country's toughest jail. He arranged for cash payments to be secretly made to prisoners who were prepared to worship Allah. In what prison authorities described as a pay-to-pray conspiracy, 12 of the 37 inmates at the Supermax facility became Muslim fundamentalists or converts. They all shaved their heads, grew long beards and prayed in their cells up to five times a day. Some were of Muslim background but others were white Australians or Aborigines. Converts were receiving regular payments of $100 which was more than enough for them to be able to buy radios, cigarettes and other luxuries. The payments were traced to a bank account in Bankstown, a Sydney suburb with a large Arabic and Muslim population. Such was his hold over fellow inmates that some were observed by prison officers kneeling at his feet and kissing his hand. They held meetings in which they discussed Islam and martyrdom. They considered Bassam to be their imam or leader. However, all this came crashing down when strict conditions were imposed on Bassam. Bassam is first eligible for parole on June 1, 2035.